As a reminder, our speaker bios are all available on the One Stop Shop website. But for now, I am honored to introduce our keynote speakers, Office of Generic Drugs, where he serves as a senior agency advisor in the development and implementation of FDA policies and long range objectives for generic drugs scientific programs and activities, including the development of a strategic plan for the generic drug program. Our second keynote is Dr. Jeffrey Wu. Amanda Wu joined, it, joined the FDA's Office of Testing and Research in 2010 and has served in multiple capacities. Throughout his tenure, he has been deeply involved leading and co-leading review and research for PDUFA and CADUFA programs. Between 2013 and 2017, he served as a founding member of the OPQ Emerging Technology Team. So help me welcome our first keynote speaker, Dr. Darby Kozak. All right, well, thank you, Brenda. And on behalf of the entire Office of Generic Drugs, I'd like to welcome everyone here today to the 25 Generic Drug Forum. As Brenda mentioned, this event has been held annually for over a decade now and really aims to facilitate more transparent and effective communications between the FDA, the generic drug industry, that additional clarity would benefit from everyone involved with the generic drug program. It's our dear hope that providing this regulatory transparency, offering this practical advice and case studies, and discussing issues related to generic drug development can result in a more efficient generic drug development process and a clear regulatory pathway to potential approval. Oops, the wrong direction. There we are, on the right track now. So, as part of my keynote, I have broken into three sort of things. I only have got 10 minutes, but I did wanna highlight three key components of the, the generic drug program in my, my overall view. Um, the first component here is I wanna really talk about the state of the generic drug program, in particular focusing mm -hmm. on highlights of the 2024 and approvals, and in particular, some of the noteworthy approvals in 2024. We had a number of uh, notable approvals over the last few years, but in 2024, we had a notable approval that really shows the impact of how research and FDA's guidance can really translate to approval and first access to a complex generic product. Uh, I'll give a case study of the generic lubricane liposomal injection. The next component I'll talk about within this, this keynote is really how FDA continues to be initiatives and advancing and trying to think about new ways to facilitate access to generics and really advance and make the GADUFA program more uh, valuable for, for industry and for everyone involved. I've got three bullet points I wanna talk about there in that aspect. The first is this new pilot program that we announced about six months ago on increased transparency uh, Dr. Ted Sherwood will speak later on today about that in more detail, but I want to give a highlight of that, as well as a new initiative uh, we've identified as, as needing additional sort of uh, engagement, enhanced communication, and that's particularly using the product development meetings to have submission and review and sort of feedback on bioequivalence uh, protocols uh, and studies. The last thing I'm gonna highlight is, as Brenda also mentioned, is, is helping to collate. FDA has produced a lot of interesting sort of seminars, resources, webinars, and barely making that available to you as industry and more accessible. So we've created a, a new website, helpful webinars and other resources for generic drug manufacturers that I wanted to kind of highlight. And the last is probably the elephant in the room that we all want to make address and really an call to industry is the importance of data integrity for the overall health of generic drug program. So one of the key aspects we're all here is ensuring that U.S. patients have greater access to safe and effective medications is essential to the U.S. public health and a priority of FDA. Generic drugs are a cornerstone of this. As generics continue to account for over 90% of all prescription drugs dispensed in the United States, generics not only ensure patients have access to these vital medications, but have also saved trillions of dollars in public health costs for the, over the past decade. 
So the agency continues to improve its transparency and efficiency of the generic drug development, assessment, and approval process. This ultimately aims to reduce barriers for generics to enter the marketplace. And this includes actions to streamline the application process to reduce the number of assessment cycles needed to attain application approval. All this is done without sacrificing the scientific rigor and quality that underlines, underlies the generic drug program. The generic drug user fee amendments provides essential support to our generic drug program. It enables us to bring greater predictability and timelines to the assessment of the generic drug applications. It also helps accelerate patients' access to these vital medications. As shown in this graph, you can clearly see that the CADUFA program and associated commitments have improved assessment efficiency and reduced the time it takes for an ANDA to be found acceptable. Compared to the beginning of the CADUFA program back in 2013, the program continues to decrease the time it needed to approve uh, of generic drug applications. So every year we approve or tenly approve hundreds of ANDAs, including many first generics and complex generics. Last year we approved or tenly approved over 900 ANDAs. Of those, 92 were for complex products, 72 were first generics, and 132 generics were designated as competitive generic therapies. Mind you, these figures don't actually include the additional work that FDA has done in responding to over thousands of post-approval supplements, control correspondence, suitability petitions, and meeting press. All this work helps support a vital generic industry and the critical medications it produces. So GDUF is not just about the application review, but it also includes a science and research program and numerous commitments to provide support to our reviewers and applicants before they submit their application. This program has helped to strengthen and diversify the pipeline of generic drug applications, including for complex generic drug products. A great recent example of how the GDUFA research and guidances that we generate through product-specific guidances and general guidances has facilitated access to more generic products. This here is an example of the 2024 approval of the first generic bubivacaine liposomal injection suspension. This product is a locally acting, complex, multivascular liposomal injection for post-surgical, non-opioid pain management. To better understand the critical quality attributes that impact the equivalents, we initiated an FDA internal laboratory project in 2016. Results from that study helped inform our thinking, enabled us to post a product-specific guidance for this product in 2018. But more importantly, we also published the background science and thinking in a 2019 article in the Journal of Controlled Release. That information helps to provide additional sort of support and information to industry on what sort of methods we looked at and critical sort of attributes we're looking at. So in addition to that, because there can be multiple methods and techniques to measure a physical chemical property or CQA, we also initiated an external project with Dr. Anna Schwinn at the University of Michigan in 2020. That research has helped inform our reviewers of the best practices and considerations for these different analytical methods and more about the impact of the differences in product CQAs. That project has then gone on to publish three additional sort of publicly available research articles that provide additional information on those methods and that thinking. But I think what that all comes to do is actually at that far side of the graph is in 2024, we actually approved that first generic to this highly complex and very unique product. So by providing that dedicated resource and a structured framework for, the, for innovation, FDA's GDUFA Science and Research Program is an essential component of FDA's mission to protect and promote public health. It helps us ensure FDA is better informed and prepared for the assessment of generic applications, as well as propels progress in the science and technology to enhance generic drug development. You can access the QR code here on this slide to read more online about the GDUFA Science and Research Program, as well as FDA's generic drug research priorities and projects. So in addition to our negotiated GDUFA commitments, we are constantly looking for opportunities to be more transparent and improve efficiency. About six months ago, we began a pilot program to provide more transparency to generic applicants with missed goal date ANDAs due to complicated regulatory issues. The goal is to provide more information out of the applicants where possible, that's important to know, about the nature of the issue delaying the action. Keep in mind, 
These andas with missed goal dates are only a very small fraction of the total andas that we receive and take action on every year, as is reflected by FDA always meeting its uh, greater than 90% CADUFA goal date metrics. So you hear more detail about this pilot program in a later talk this morning, and after, but however, after the first six months of the pilot, we have found that it generally our stakeholders are appreciative of the additional information and the proactive feedback that the pilot program's providing. One thing I want to note, and as you'll see on this graph, over the last six months, data integrity issues were the leading cause for an ANDA missing its goal date by more than 60 days. I'll talk more about this issue and FDA's ask for industry a little bit later in my keynote. So the, through our GADUFA negotiations, we've developed several pathways to improve communication with applicants on critical aspects of their generic drug product development. These include those pre-ANDA meetings at the early stages of product development, mid-cycle and ANDA review meetings, and post-complete sponsor letter meetings. We believe that these have been highly successful to improving transparency of our current thinking and to reduce uncertainty in the development of these products. One aspect I want to highlight is we continue to assess where enhanced communication can help improve ANDA issues and I want to announce the OGD is now seeing sees a need for, uh, for more early communication with applicants on bioclone study protocols. So as part of that, when we're looking at common bioclones deficiencies, we found that it'd be beneficial for OGD and industry to discuss challenging and or novel in vivo BE studies with pharmacokinetic endpoints or with complex study protocols, such as for long-acting injectables or liposomes, prior to an applicant's study being conducted. Similarly, OGD saw a benefit for industry to discuss protocols for challenging in vitro BE studies, such as for IVRT, IVPT, or in vitro BE studies for nasal and inhalation drug products prior to conducting these studies. Therefore, OGD is encouraging applicants with these challenging or novel bioequivalence inquiries to submit these as a product development meeting. But I do want to remind you, this is not intended to be an open-ended protocol review by FDA. Rather, we're asking applicants to submit specific questions related to the protocol for OGD to respond to. These could include things like inclusion and exclusion criteria, statistical considerations, or steady state determination, or study design. So another initiative I mentioned at the very beginning is to enhance communication with generic drug industry and applicants to reduce common deficiencies and hopefully improve assessment efficiency. So as part of that, we've published a new web page called Helpful Webinars and Other Resources for Generic Drug Manufacturers. This website, as also Brenda mentioned, brings together and organizes relevant FDA workshops, webinars, and seminars related to best practices to reduce common and deficiencies. You can access this site through this QR code on this slide. Here's a reminder why we're all here today and what our overarching mission is. All right, so this is one of my calls at the very last is for industry. So although in common compared to the number of generic applications submitted, approved, and marketed every year, data integrity issues impact everyone a part of the generic industry and generic program. Questions or concerns of data integrity erode public confidence in all medications, not just those that were at issue. It consumes vital FDA resources to investigate, document, and take action on these issues. This resource drain not only impacts those applicants in question, but also reduces resources we could otherwise apply to other issues. As I also mentioned previously, this year data integrity issues were the main reason OG missed could do for goal dates. Therefore, it's critical for everyone, especially the pharmaceutical industry, to take proactive steps to prevent future data integrity issues from occurring. So it's critically important that and applicant, applicants submit accurate, complete, and reliable data. Unreliable or fraudulent data undermines safety and efficacy and quality of all generic drugs and can decrease confidence in generic products overall. It can also result in other serious consequences, including the need to perform new studies and potentially day approval and access to generics. Therefore, our recommendations when selecting a CRO we recommend that all applicants take steps to verify the CROs under consideration, have an appropriate quality management system in place, and have a positive compliance history. Applicants need to ensure that the CRO performs all study-related activities in compliance with all applicable laws and regulations. 
applicants should also keep in mind that although they can contract with testing sites, ultimately the responsibility for the quality and integrity of the study data in your ANDA resides with you. As a company, you need to emphasize that data integrity is an important core value of your organization and expect everybody to be responsible and accountable for that data quality. And as a reminder, FDA posted a draft guidance on data integrity for in vivo bioavailability and bioequivalent studies in April 2024. We issued this guidance as part of our Drug Competition Action Plan, which seeks to improve the efficiency of the generic drug development, review, and approval process. The draft guidance provides FDA's current thinking and recommendations to applicants in testing site management on achieving and maintaining data integrity. So as I wrap up, I want to remind us that FDA and OGD enters 2025, we're excited to further our mission of ensuring the availability of high quality, safe and effective generic drugs for the American public. In 2025, OGD will continue to focus on matters such as operational modernization, workforce excellence, communication with generic companies, and meeting our GADUFA program goals. Every GADUFA cycle continues to improve the generic program and utility of the assessment cycles. In 2025, we'll begin the next GADUFA negotiations, which will provide an opportunity to further develop this important program. Ultimately, it's the American patient that benefits most from the GADUFA funded programs since these activities contribute to timely approvals of critical generic drug products. We'll also continue advancing research that reduces uncertainty in the development of generic drugs and improves the efficiency of the drug development and assessment process. In addition, OG will continue to prioritize transparent engagement with industry, the public, including on the outcomes of this research and to continue to facilitate development of new generic drug products for the American patients. With that, I want to thank to you to everyone who's worked hard to make this two-day event possible, and I hope that the next two days of presentations are informative and useful for all the attendees. So with that, I'll hand over to my colleague, Commander Jeffrey Wu.